The Mass Effect Legendary Edition is only a few weeks away and one of the biggest decisions that you will make when starting the series is what class to play as this will affect your overall experience with the game. This video series is designed to give you an in-depth look into each class so that you can make the most informed choice to match your preferred playstyle. In today's video we're going to take a deep dive look at the Adept class and everything it has to offer as well as looking at how the class evolved across the trilogy and some tips and advice and some of the best companions that pair nicely with this class. The Adept is the equivalent to the Mage class in any RPG. In Dante's words, they wield space magic. In Mass Effect lore terms, the Adept is a pure biotic specialist, powerful manipulators of Mass Effect fields equipped with L5X implants. They use their biotics to manipulate objects in the environment, including enemy targets. Their main role is to provide crowd control and support to other squad mates. Some of the strengths of the Adept include their ability to disable and debuff enemies while dealing massive amounts of damage, all without firing a single shot. They are also the only class able to use all biotic abilities. They do have some glaring weaknesses though. They can only equip light armor, offering them extremely low damage protection. Adepts are especially vulnerable to close range combat like shotguns and melee attacks, and the limited range of their biotic abilities can expose them to sniper fire as they try to close the gap. The lack of any advanced combat training also limits them mainly to SMGs and pistols. They also possess no tech skills, meaning they do struggle against shielded enemies and are relying on their squad mates to pick up the slack in these areas. In the original Mass Effect, combat for adepts revolves around the rapid and frequent use of their biotic powers to debuff and stagger enemies. As such, they receive the lowest weapons training and are only able to train and become proficient in pistols, eventually gaining access to the marksman talent, which improves fire rate and accuracy, as well as reducing overheating. Adepts start out with the lowest health and armor rating of all the classes. To improve this, they are able to spec into the passive skill tree basic armor, which increases Shepard's resistance to damage and also unlocks the shield boost ability, which recharges a portion of Shepard's shield per second when used. Adepts are limited to light armor, which has the weakest shields and lowest damage reduction, so they are extremely squishy and rely on another active power to boost their defense. That power is Barrier, which when used creates an additional shield on top of those provided by armor. Additional points spent into this tree increases the amount of shields added by Barrier and extends the duration effect. Given the squishy nature of the Adept, it is a good idea to have Barrier activated as often as possible, and especially when moving out of cover. Let's look at the active biotic powers available to the Adept. First up is Throw. This pushes movable objects in a targeted area away from you. Heavy objects and enemies like Krogan will require a stronger push to be knocked down, and players will need to spec into the tree to increase the force, accuracy and recharge speed of the move. Throw has a strong effect on airborne enemies and pairs well with abilities like Lift and Singularity, allowing you to push enemies further away. It's worth noting though that Throw has no effect on flying enemies like drones. Lift works exactly as it sounds. It lifts enemies or objects in a targeted area for a duration of time. When the duration ends, the targets are dropped and will take damage based on how far they have fallen. Spending points into this tree reduces the recharge time and accuracy cost and increases the effect radius and duration of the move. Warp deals damage over time and reduces the damage protection of all targets. It pairs nicely with Stasis to lock an enemy in place while the warp damages over time. This damage protection debuff can make enemies with high armor take significantly more damage from weapons fire. 
Singularity pulls movable objects and enemies into the effect's radius. Additional points spent into this trait can increase the radius and duration of the effect. In addition to suspending enemies in the air, the ability also pulls groups of enemies closer together, making them more vulnerable to area of effect damage and status effects like warp, dampening, sabotage and overload. Singularity is one of the Adept's best crowd control abilities and my personal favourite. And finally, you have Stasis, which places a target in Stasis for a period of time, disabling their movement abilities and weapons. It's very useful when confronting multiple difficult enemies. The only downside to the effect is that for its duration, the target is immune to direct damage, though this can be changed when specking into the Stasis specialization. As you can see, the Adept has a wide range of useful abilities at their disposal. Spending points into the Adept class talent tree, of course, reduces the cooldown of all biotic powers and increases biotic protection from enemy biotic attacks attacks. As you progress through the game, the Adept can also specialise into one of two roles. The Bastion, which shortens the recharge time of all biotic abilities and provides specialisation bonuses to Barrier and Stasis. This specialism revolves around defence and efficiency, making it easier to use your moveset more frequently. Nemesis, on the other hand, increases the duration and damage of all biotic abilities, providing specialization bonuses to lift and warp, making you a more lethal damage-dealing biotic. So picking the right specialism very much depends on your preferred playstyle. When it comes to choosing the right squad mates in Mass Effect 1, with no natural tech abilities, the Adept should take at least one squad member who specialises in electronics and decryption, as these give you access to wall safes and containers that store useful armour and mods, and computer terminals that may give you access to useful intel. Garrus is a good choice with his mix of combat and tech abilities and his adrenaline burst which allows him to use his tech talent like Overload more frequently, while his weapon and armour skills allow him to perform well in combat. As for choosing a second squad member, Ashley and Rex are your primary choices for combat squad mates, but Ashley is better suited for the Adept squad due to Rex's biotics, which may well feel redundant as the Adept already possesses these abilities. Ashley is also better suited to combat overall with her assault training and her increased health capacity, making her a strong frontline fighter, taking some of the aggro and allowing you to fight more effectively from the back. In Mass Effect 2, the combat is much more streamlined with an increased focus on simple skill trees and quickly selectable class powers. The franchise took a very definite move away from the more RPG-based skill progression of the first game to a more action-orientated cover system and fluid combat, which is very much geared around weapons, class powers and synergies. The Mass Effect 2 version of the Adept is more streamlined than the Mass Effect version. It still has the same crowd control ability, but that ability is now condensed into two powers, Singularity and Pull. Warp was also changed from a debuff move into a straight up damage dealer to complement throw and provide options for damaging abilities. Shockwave works as a bit of both, doing moderate damage and knocking enemies off their feet for a brief period of time. It's also a great way to push enemies out from behind cover. The Adept does have a significant drawback though with regards to shields and a lesser extent armour. The mechanics of Mass Effect 2 were changed so that any enemy with any form of protection cannot be controlled and biotic abilities are very bad at burning through shields. This forces you to rely on your squad mates or your weapon damage to whittle down protected enemies using biotics to finish them off. The Adept is also able to use three types of weapons, heavy pistols, submachine guns and heavy weapons. I won't go into too much depth but I will touch upon each of the powers briefly and some of the new changes introduced in Mass Effect 2 as well as some tips on when and how to combine these moves. 
Warp is one of the Adept's most damaging moves in Mass Effect 2. It is extremely effective for stripping armor and barriers, dealing double damage to them. It also stops health regeneration, so it's extremely useful against the Krogan and Vulture. Using Warp on enemies lifted with Pull, Singularity or Slam also triggers a Biotic Explosion, a new addition to Mass Effect 2. These explosions throw unprotected enemies around and cause increased damage. They also look and sound cool too. Throw and the new Pull ability also lift enemies into the air. In Mass Effect 2, damage to lifted and frozen enemies is significantly increased, taking double weapon damage and leaving them open to a warp explosion. Pull is also an extremely useful move, allowing you to pull enemies from behind cover, especially at long range, allowing you to finally target snipers, making them vulnerable to attack, or even dragging them over chasms or off ledges for an instant kill. Singularity works the same as it did in Mass Effect 1, but it can now be evolved into Wide or Heavy Singularity at rank 4, increasing its area of effect or allowing it to pull multiple enemies into the air. It remains one of the Adept's best crowd control moves, even for protected enemies which are repeatedly staggered by it. Finally, the new Shockwave move is great for routing enemies, sending out a series of explosions in a straight line in the direction you're facing, knocking enemies around and causing damage. These explosions can climb walls and hit enemies behind cover, though the downside is it is very hard to control. Shockwave is best in situations where poking your head out to fire any other power would be too risky, such as under heavy fire or waiting for your shields to recharge. Mass Effect 2 massively expands the roster, giving you 13 possible squad mates, though three of these are DLC content. This is still a huge increase over Mass Effect 1's five possible companions. Squad mates in Mass Effect 2, though, are more streamlined compared to Mass Effect 1, where each squad mate had eight talents. Companions in ME2 have only two base powers and one loyalty power that unlocks upon completing their loyalty mission. One of these powers can also be mapped to a a shortcut prompt usually right or left on the d-pad allowing you to activate the ability without the need to pause the action making combat more fluid and action focused when it comes to choosing the best squad mates there are two major roles you want for your team members the ability to take down shields and the ability to get kills at long range the Adept is nearly useless when it comes to taking down shields, so having a squad mate with the Overload ability will be the best thing to bring along on missions. Squad mates like Garrus, Miranda and Kasumi are ideal. Having squad mates that can kill at a distance to cover the Adept's lack of long range capability is also especially useful. Garrus, Thane, Legion and Zaid are good choices here. Bringing another biotic with the squad tends to be redundant as most of their powers are already available to the Adept. However, for the Adept who likes to use biotic combos, bringing the appropriate complement can make these faster and easier to pull off, so it generally depends on your preferred playstyle. Mass Effect 3 takes the combat from Mass Effect 2 and uses the same powers and cover based system but with some tweaks. With some of the new additions to the combat system in Mass Effect 3, the Adept is capable of becoming a real powerhouse. Firstly, the game introduced a new weight capacity system which affects players' power recharge time. The Adept should aim to create a fast cooldown build by equipping low weight guns like pistols and SMGs, keeping their power recharge speed at or close to 200%, thus allowing them to use their abilities more frequently, with some abilities like throw becoming available almost instantly after use. A power efficient adept can often kill or disable several enemies in one fell swoop before they even have a chance to fire back. Mass Effect 3 also improved most powers, allowing them to be thrown in an arc around corners and over cover to hit enemies, allowing the adept to hunker down safely behind cover while they throw out power after power. The adept does get a new passive skill tree called Fitness, which focuses on health, shield and melee damage, and you would think this is useful given the squishy nature of the class. However, considering an adept can do most of their damage from 
range, arcing their powers around corners and over cover without exposing themselves to enemy fire, you might find you don't need the survivability boost this passive ability provides. Melee damage boosts are also less useful for the adept than other classes, as their heavy melee attack is primarily a knockback attack and inflicts less damage than the other class's heavy melee, so it may be best to focus on your core powers before putting points into this tree. The biggest game changer for the adept though was the introduction of power combos. These require two different powers to activate, a primer and a detonator. Primers determine which of the four types of power combos will be primed, and once detonated cause a massive explosion and increased damage. The four types of power combos available are Fire, Cryo, Tech and Biotic. Biotic explosions do two times normal damage against barriers and armour. Enemies killed by Cryo explosions shatter without leaving a corpse, and enemies caught in the blast radius but not killed or frozen can be chilled and have their movement speed slowed by 30%. Tech bursts create a blast of electricity that inflicts severe damage on the shield and health of nearby enemies and have a chance to stun them. Tech bursts also do two times normal damage against shields. And finally, fire explosions create a blast of flames that inflicts damage against the armor and health of enemies. Fire explosions also do two times normal damage against armor. I won't go into too much detail on the different combinations possible here as they are numerous, but I will flash up a couple here on screen for you to see. One of the most powerful tools for an adept is the biotic explosion. This occurs when combining any biotic primer that has a duration or lift capability like warp, pull or singularity and a different biotic detonator that has a damage or force stat like warp, throw and shockwave. It's worth noting that the power of biotic combos depends on the rank of the powers used, so using two rank 6 powers will do more damage. In addition to biotic explosions, most of the adept's powers are capable of triggering tech power combos too. Tech bursts are the easiest to trigger and make up for the adept's lack of anti anti-shield powers. The Adept also gains a new class power called Cluster Grenade. These do not work on a cooldown and need ammo to use. A Cluster Grenade when thrown splits into three and later five smaller grenades if you spec into it, dealing significant damage in the area. They're extremely useful on large groups of enemies and very potent for detonating power combos, detonating all kinds of combos with each grenade triggering a combo, meaning that if thrown into a crowd of primed enemies, it can set off multiple combos at once for massive damage. It's also worth mentioning that pull is an extremely useful move against guardians and cat six heavies, allowing you to remove their riot shield, staggering them and leaving them vulnerable to another power. Each class power can be leveled up to rank 6, and the third game in the trilogy takes a turn towards more RPG based skill progression, as after rank 3, each subsequent rank has two possible branches, allowing players to customize Commander Shepard to their preferred playstyle. Some of these rank 5 and rank 6 abilities are extremely powerful for the adept, changing the way that certain powers work or massively boosting power combos and biotic explosions. It's well worth experimenting with different trees and different builds to see what works best for you. While the Adept is more than capable of creating their own biotic explosions, it's still a good idea to bring two squadmates with you that also give you plenty of useful options in terms of primers and detonators, and you have plenty to choose from as Mass Effect 3 gives you 7 regular and 11 temporary squadmates as part of the story. Each has 4 active and 1 passive power. Some squadmates capable of capitalizing on the Adept's ability to set up biotic explosions include Liara, who has three powers at her disposal, Warp, Singularity and Stasis, all are good primers that an adept can detonate. She also has faster recharge times due to her pure biotic class power. 
Caden has Reeve, which can be used as both a primer and detonator for biotic combos, and Javik's Dark Channel is also an effective primer for biotic combos, as it will shift to another enemy if the first target dies, allowing the Adept to constantly have a target for detonation. Adepts pack somewhat less of a punch against shields as they do against barriers and armor, so taking at least one squad mate with a power designed to deal with shields might be a good idea for some missions. Overload, possessed by Caden, Edie, and Garrus, Disruptor Ammo, provided by Ashley, and Energy Drain, provided by Tally, deal extra damage to shields, and the electric effects of these powers can be combined with Throw for quick tech bursts. So there are plenty of options for the Adept when choosing members for your squad. So there you have it. There is everything that you need to know about the Adept class before jumping into the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Let me know what you think of the Adept and if you have any more questions about the class, please feel free to post these in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, remember to show your support by liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing. I will be back again next week with my next video in the series, which will look at the Vanguard. So look forward to that. Anyway, hope you guys have a great week. Of course, take care and as always, happy gaming. Bye guys. I should go.